Once upon a time, not really very long ago, there lived in this small Midwestern town a young man named William Blake. Like many other young men brought up in small towns, William was anxious to see what he called the outside world. I can't for the life of me figure out why William wanted to leave such a pretty town, all sprinkled with clean white houses and great green lawns planted with cool shade trees. Oh, it's true that Williamstown is just a small town, but there's really a lot to do here and on the large farms nearby. The farms that produce much of the food that keeps you and me and other city folk alive and healthy. One of these farms belongs to William's grandparents. And it is on this farm that William spends much of his time during the long summer vacations from school. But there's William now, sitting on that cool bank by the stream that runs through the farm. There he sits, fishing and daydreaming. And there is Shivers, his dog. It's a very pretty place. I'm sure that you or I wouldn't want to leave such a delightful spot. But William is quite a man now. You see, he graduated from the eighth grade just last week. And next semester, he'll be starting high school. So he feels that he'd like to travel to the big city and seek his fortune. Just daydreaming, of course. Let me put it this way. Have you ever noticed how a cow will most always try to get to the grass on the other side of the fence? even though she is surrounded by grass just as good and just as green. Well, that's how it is with people, too. We just have to see if the grass is greener on the other side of the fence. Most of us, the lucky ones, soon discover that the grass at home is greener, and we're glad to return. But first, most of us just have to find out. Now, that's exactly how William felt. He likes his town and this fine big farm, but his thoughts, for the moment at least, are on those greener fields over the horizon. In William's case, the city. Bill, I don't think he'd mind if we called him Bill, He's such a friendly fellow, as we'll soon see. Well, Bill has been mighty restless since school closed for the summer, and he feels that he'll simply explode if he doesn't get to the city pretty soon. Although I must say he doesn't look at all restless here, stretched out in the field, looking up at the sky and finding all sorts of pictures in the clouds. That's a wonderful way to think things out. I'm sure you've all tried it. It's fun at night, too to lie flat on your back and look up at the stars. Sometimes, especially on Monday nights, they say, you can see shooting stars. But I'm getting away from my story. Looking at Bill so nice and comfortable makes me drowsy. Uh, pardon me. You know, I'll bet he falls asleep and forgets all about that nonsense of seeking his fortune in the city. Oh, I guess not. Well, let's watch and see what he does. Shivers, I've made up my mind. Yes, sir, I've made up my mind. I'm going to the city today. Right now, in fact. Let's see. One dollar and... Seventy-three cents. That'll take me a long ways, uh-huh. I've got these sandwiches, too. I'll be a man of action, as Grandfather says, and start out right now. You stay here. The city is no place for a country dog. Go on, you run along home. Good day, my young and healthy friend. Whither are you bound? Beyond a great city, perchance? Come and visit with a tired, lonely old traveler for a spell. Why, hello. Oh, forgive me for staring. I don't mean to be rude, 
But I must say, you startled me. Oh, come now, my dear young sir. There's no reason why I should startle you. It's just that you don't know me. Do stop for a moment. As I was about to say, you don't know me yet. Lots of people find me a delightful companion when first they get to know me. But alas... I don't seem to be able to keep my friends for very long. I try so hard to make people happy and gay, but uh, I guess my spirits are much too strong for them. <laughs> That's a joke, boy. A joke? You are a funny fellow, but you really don't seem like such a bad sort. If you had a bath and some clean clothes, you might look halfway decent. A bath? Clean clothes? Sir, don't mention such things in my presence. I can see that you're a country boy. Don't you know who I am? You do look familiar. Let me see. Haven't I seen your pictures in the magazines or on the billboards? To be sure, thousands of times. There are a lot of news items and stories about me. None of them very good. But in the paid advertising on the billboards and the magazines... You'll see some very nice pictures of me, but not how I look now. After all, I've been sick. I think I remember. Isn't your name Whiskey? That's right. You're a lot smarter than I thought you were. That's my name, all right. See? If you look closely, you'll see it written right here on my shirt front. Sure enough, I can see it. But what are you doing here by the road? I can see you have a lot to learn. Well, first things first. In answer to your question, I was traveling along in a beautiful car with a fine fellow from the city. He was on his way out here for some fishing, and he brought me along to keep him company. And because of me, he smashed up his car. Right over there. Now, he's in the hospital, and here I am, walking, walking, mind you, all the way back to the city. Some people are so ungrateful. This is all very mysterious. I've never seen anybody like you where I live. And just where might that be? Williamsboro, just a few miles down the road. Oh, that place. My friends and I are not allowed there. The citizens think we bring too much trouble. Let me tell you right here and now that things are getting very bad for me and my friends all over the country. There are so many, many places we're not allowed anymore. Well, it's been nice meeting you, but I must get along. I want to get to the city before dark. Well, I'm on my way to the city, too. Do you mind if I come along as sort of a companion? I could keep you company and point out things of interest along the road. Well, I guess it would be all right. My father said I should be very careful with whom I make friends. But I don't see any harm in just walking along together. Think you can keep up with me? I'm a pretty fast walker. Don't worry about that. Whenever I make a friend, I stick right with him as long as I can. In fact, I've had many friends who just couldn't part with me. These friends of yours that just couldn't part with you, where are they now? Unfortunately, many of them are sick, and quite a few have died. It's very sad. We were all so merry for a short while, and then the ones, the, the friends who are still living, turned against me. Oh, I've caused a lot of trouble in my time. But don't you have other friends uh, like yourself? Oh, sure, there's Brother Beer and Cousin Wine and Uncle Rum, but we never mixed very well as a family. But let's talk about you. Why do you want to leave this nice countryside for the city? If I had to do it all over again, I think I'd just be plain Mr. Soda Pop and lead the good life. Dear, dear, I'm afraid it's too late for that now. I haven't decided what I want to do when I'm a man. Of course, that's not very far off. But what kind of a job I'd be happiest doing? And I thought that being in the city would give me a chance to look around and find something interesting. To be sure, to be sure. Look at that train. Now that would be fun to be the engineer of a locomotive like that. How would that suit you, Mr. Whiskey? 
Oh, I'm afraid I could never be your companion in the cab of a locomotive. No. The railroad companies would never allow that. Why not? Well, they have rules and regulations that say their engineers must have clear heads and sharp eyes. And there's no place for a poor old whiskey in a setup like that. Oh, that's a shame. Oh, it would be great fun to be at the throttle and go zooming by the countryside and over the prairies and across the mountains. Well, maybe you could ride in as a passenger. No, that doesn't work well either. Some of my relatives have, but there are certain states where we're not allowed, even as passengers. Oh, don't carry on so, Mr. Whiskey. Maybe you could be my companion doing something else. Could be, but I doubt it. I sincerely doubt it. Hey, that would be a fine position to have. A pilot on a cross-country plane. Hey, that'd be even more fun than running a train. Can't you see yourself way up above the clouds, soaring over the mountains? flying over the country and swooping in for a graceful landing. Stop it! Stop it! You're making me all nervous and dizzy. I could never, never be your companion on a plane. That would be even more impossible than being with you on a train. Why? Rules and regulations again. Always rules and regulations. They say I impair the judgment and dull the senses. And they have very strict rules about letting pilots come in contact with me. It's unheard of. No, well, you'll have to try something else. Say, you mind if we rest for a while? I'm all out of breath. Just here by the side of the road for a minute or two. But hold on a minute. Uh, mind if we cross over? I'd rather not walk by that church. That's about the silliest thing you've said yet. You need the church. We all do. Without the church and what it stands for, we'd have nothing. That might be all right for you, but religion and I don't mix. Most pastors are among my greatest enemies. I've lost a lot of my old companions when they've turned from me to the church. Uh, mind if we cross over? I'll meet you over in that other corner. This will do. We'll rest here. Just for a minute or two. Here, have a sandwich. What you need is some food. No, no, I have no stomach for sandwiches. It's indigestion, you know. Whiskey and food just don't mix. Please put it away. Hey, look out there where those miners are coming up from work. Now, there's a worthwhile job. Without those miners, we wouldn't have any coal or ore. And without those things, we wouldn't have any industry. No cars, no planes, trains, stoves, buildings. Why, we wouldn't have anything. They'd never let me underground. The miners say I'm too dangerous. But do you know? A lot of my friends are underground. Way under. Right over there. I must say, I don't think much of your humor. Come on, let's get a move on. We've got to get to the thing. Hey, take it easy. Let, let's sit down for a spell. Oh, you're always tired. Maybe if you did a little exercise, well, you might try baseball or football. Or look over there at that beach where those people are swimming. Say, that would make you feel real fine. Those waves would pep you up, and the nice cold water would clear your head. Mm. Never. You must think I'm an awful sissy, but I never did have any place in sports, and athletes spurn me like the plague. Same old story. I interfere with muscle and bone and timing and endurance. You're making me feel very bad. I sure will be glad, as glad as I can be, when we reach the city and I can get home. You should see where I live. That's where I have lots of friends. Yes, sir, lots of friends. Where do you 
you live in? What are your friends like? If you'll pardon me, you seem so particular. It's not that I'm so part uh, so uh, so fussy. It's the others who shy away from me and push me about and generally make my life miserable. Just like so many people say I make their lives miserable. Me, whiskey. There's no justice. Why, just the other day, a dear companion of mine took me home, and his wife raised the roof. Complained of me making her husband spend all his money on me. On me. Just imagine. Why, he didn't spend any more money on me than he did on my kinfolk, wine, rum, and beer. And then she had the nerve to take me by the neck and throw me out of the window. I still have the bruises. Look. The other day, I passed my ex-companion on the street, and he avoided me. Cut me dead. No wonder I have complexes. Well, it seems to me that you would change your way of living. Well, if I did that, I'd never come in contact with people. I'd never have any companions. From what you've told me, I'd say people would be a lot better off if they never came in contact with you. Why, that's not a bit polite. I'm really quite a gay fellow. Look. Look at that big ship. Now, that would be a fine life, captain of a ship, with all the sea and oceans as highways. Think of all the fun it would be to travel and see strange lands and romantic islands. It makes me seasick even to think of such a thing. If I can't be your companion on a train or a plane, it certainly stands the reason that I couldn't be with you on board a ship. No, I could never be responsible for all those people on board. Now... Come on. Ah, I'm beginning to feel a bit better. <coughs> Pretty soon we'll be home now. Just smell that lovely fresh soot. It's a fire you smell over there. Why, the whole building is ablaze. important job for you. A fireman. How would you like that? You know I could never be companion to a fireman. They, they say I have not the nerve for it, and I'd soon ruin your nerves and strength. No, that's not the job for us. Anyway, I hate water. not as bad as you think. These are really fine companions. Well, let me introduce you to one of my oldest friends. Right down this alley. Come on. Hello there, 
there, my friend. How are you? I have someone I want you to meet. This is Bill. I'm going to be his companion while he's in the city. Oh. Ah, oh, it's you, is it? I thought I'd gotten away from you. And if I wasn't so weak, sick, I'd break your miserable neck. So you think you found a new companion, huh? Well, not if I have my say. Young fella, you get out of here before it's too late. This, uh, Mr. Whiskey never be your friend. Uh, in the beginning, you'll pretend to be. Make all sorts of grand promises, but in the end, you'll have all your health and all your money and might even make you a slave. Get out of here, boy, and fast. Rubbish. There's no way for you to talk. Don't listen to him, Bill. Look, Mr. Whiskey, or whatever your name is, I don't like it here. I'm going to leave. That's right, boy. Get out of here. Yeah, you've seen the men on the street. There are countless thousands of us who have listened to his promises. And look at us now. All men of extinction. Go on home. Just a minute, my dear young sir. I don't give up so easily. Friends are hard to find, and I insist that we be companions. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Get your hands off me. Shivers. Oh, shivers. Am I glad to see you. What a terrible dream I had. It was a dream, I think. But at the same time, it seems so real. Boy, I'd never want a companion like that old Mr. Whiskey. No, sir. You know, isn't this the most beautiful place in the whole wide world? Come on, let's go see what happens to this. Come on. Well, there's one who got away from me. But I'll keep trying. Thank you.